What's up everybody, Superworks fan here for another weekly update. So the first thing I want to mention is that I have a cold this week. So if I sound a little off or sickly, that's the reason why. And um, so I just want to get that out of the way. Uh, another thing I want to get out of the way is, you know, a lot of people have been talking recently about YouTube and how they've been unsubscribing people and people haven't been getting notifications for videos and things like that. Um, so I just want to give you a friendly little reminder to make sure to double check and make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and uh, to go on your phone and you know, do the notifications too if you're you know okay with notifications I know it's annoying for some people but that helps to make sure you don't miss any videos and miss out and you know then find a video a week later and then be confused about what's going on on the channel because you've you know missed stuff so um, just you know something that you know it's happening to every youtuber really a lot of people are complaining about this and um, I don't want to make a huge separate rant video about it but I just wanted to you know kind of put it out there just to remind you guys I mean, if you're watching this I'm assuming that you are subscribed but it's always good to you know double check that kind of stuff because for some reason YouTube seems to be unsubscribing people uh, and I've gotten a few reports of people that have said that and they didn't realize that you know they don't know why they were unsubscribed so anyway I just wanted to put that out there anyway on to the Mustang though um, so, uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, I had my snow tires put on here uh, the other day, and so it now has the uh, Goodyear Ultra Grip Ice WRTs are the uh, winter tires that are on here, and um, it's we already gotten some snow here this week, and it's done a pretty good job so far. I haven't driven on anything really deep, you know, just very light dustings and, you know, snow-covered parking lots and things like that, but in those types of circumstances, it's done very well, which is, uh, you know, very good, and uh, like I expected, like I said, I drove the EcoBoost in two winters already with these snow tires, so nothing out of the ordinary or unexpected there. The V8, you know, shouldn't change it too much, I'm hoping, and so, yeah, but I will continue to report more on that, you know, as the winter goes on. Um, another thing, though, if you're watching this, now, see, I film these on Thursday, you'll be watching this on Friday at the earliest. Friday I'm getting my oil changed for the first time as well. I'm getting pretty close to 5,000 miles and I'll be putting a good amount of miles on most likely here in the next few days and the rest of the month. I just want to get the oil changed out of the way now even though I'm not quite at 5,000 miles. I'm at 4721 currently and so um, yeah, just gonna, you know, get that done and I'm gonna actually do full synthetic, you know, that's not required by Ford, you know, they just have the Motorcraft like blended uh, oil, but uh, you can get synthetic put in and that's what I'm gonna do is just pay a little bit extra for the full synthetic and uh, just do that. It's far too cold to do my own oil changes and just for peace of mind, you know, to have the dealership receipts, I want to have my oil changes done at the dealership, you know, to make sure the warranty is 100% totally good and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's the only other update there. The one other thing um, that I will elect elaborate more on depending on how it goes but for those other fellow 2016 Mustang owners that have the premium uh, you know trim level here with the 8 inch screen only 2016 owners um, it, there looks like there is an update out now for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay but the kicker is it's not an official update so it is an official update but it wasn't officially released by Ford yet so someone leaked it out um, it's it's totally legit though because the people that have updated so far whenever they do update supposedly uh, your car you know whenever you go onto the Ford owner website it does recognize that you have the new software version and it's an official version this isn't some you know weird bootleg or hack or anything like that it is the legit version just for some reason Ford hasn't officially released it yet um, and so uh, if you have Android Auto and you, you, know, you use an Android phone, then all you have to do is do the update and then you're good. Uh, and everyone that's done the update so far hasn't had an issue with it. Um, and then if you have an Apple product, you know, for CarPlay, CarPlay requires a new USB hub, which I actually ordered one um, that will work. It's an F-150 hub because um, the Mustang ones aren't available just yet or they're in very limited supplies. Um, so the one that I ordered is for an F-150 and it's a dual USB in the center armrest. Now my center armrest in the Mustangs only has a single USB, so it gives you a double USB in there, but then I lose the functionality the USB jack up front here. Now I could just wait, but I'm kind of eager uh, to see if this actually does work. So I'm going to live with not having that USB jack in the front working anyway. The only time I ever used that to begin with was because, uh, you know, I plugged in my phone and was looking at my maps. With CarPlay, you'll have the maps on the large screen there. And so therefore I can just leave my phone in my pocket or the cup holder and I won't have to look at the phone at all. And so I don't really need to have that 
USB jack up front working anyway. But like I said, I can always switch back to the proper USB hub, but they're all plug and play supposedly. Again, I'm going to test all this out this weekend. Um, but if you're curious about it, you can go on the Mustang forums, read into it. Um, there's all the information on there to you know figure it out for yourself. Um, and like I said, I'll probably do some kind of tutorial this weekend, maybe if it goes according to plan and everything works. Um, but again, this is still very experimental um, in many ways, at least for the CarPlay guys. Uh, so something just you know to keep in the back of your mind uh, if you have a 2016 that this update may be obtainable again i don't condone it or it's not totally legit you know as far as ford didn't release it yet so it's not you know condoned by ford or anything um but it is out there and so I'm sure now apparently it's officially out for Lincoln's Ford you know Lincoln released it and it's the same operating system essentially so I'm assuming that the official Ford release should be relatively soon but they did say they've been promising for the longest time that the update was going to be coming um, for the end of 2016 now the new announcement for CarPlay says that it's not going to be available until early 2017 so they did officially push back the release so if you're impatient like I am and really want CarPlay um, this might be a little bit of a workaround and uh, you know shouldn't really have too much risk involved but like i said i will elaborate more about that but anyway i'll send it back to me at the news desk for this week's news right so this week's news the first thing that i want to get out of the way uh is a non-news story and that is that uh there's been several websites this past week that have been recently circulating something and uh, a few fans have sent over this as well they're all excited about it and it's not true and i really hate whenever news stories and news sites uh, especially car related ones don't do their research and you know post stuff that isn't true so uh, what the big news was this week was that um, if you Google 2017 Shelby GT500, a Ford site comes up as the like top Google search result there, and it says 2017 Shelby GT500, da 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 da, and all kinds of little blurbs about the car and how awesome it is and all that kind of stuff. But uh, anyone um, that's been following you know the GT500 news should already know that that discovery was made like almost a year ago, and um, it's nothing new. And in addition to that if you look into the code and whatnot you'll find that it's actually leftover code from the 2014 gt500 that is simply a placeholder that they left there and if you click on the link for the gt500 it just it just takes you to the generic ford site or the mustang site so there is no you know secret hidden link to some gt500 or something it is simply uh, just a placeholder there trust me if ford had a car coming out they wouldn't have leaked it out with the top google search result for 2017 shelby gt500 so kind of just dumb that that was even reported on because it got a lot of people excited for no good reason. Now, there's still a possibility they may do something like they did with the Shelby GT350 where, you know, they did a very, very limited run of 2015 models, I think 120 of them, just to make that 50-year deadline, your know, 50th anniversary, uh, and then, you know, most of them were 2016s and now 2017s, so maybe there'll be like a very, very late GT500 that'll be really a 2018 model that'll be released uh, a little bit early as an earlier or a very late 2017, but again, that is still um, very far-fetched if that does in fact happen, but if it does, I don't think they'll be using that link. Another thing that's uh, funny to note is you can also Google 2017 Mustang Boss 302 and a same similar page comes up, and guess what that's from? A leftover link from the 2013 Boss 302s, uh, and so it's just <laughs> kind of dumb, but I'm sure that they'll use that as a story and be like, look, there's a new Boss 302 coming for 2017 as well, and use that same BS link. So, um, um, yeah, don't be, uh, you know, fooled by that kind of stuff. Unfortunately, like I said, some of these sites just, you know, put stuff out there because it gets lots of clicks and, uh, you know, isn't true. So, uh, unfortunate to see that. Anyway, on to the actual real news this week. The first thing is Ferrari just unveiled the Ferrari J50, which uh, stands for Japan 50. It's uh, them celebrating 50 years of being in the Japanese market. And um, what we're looking at here is a stunner. So, it's based on a 488 Spider. It's not an all-new car. Um, it's just you know basically a worked over 488 but they said that this will give um some future direction as to what you can expect for next gen ferraris which is something i'm very excited about because you know it's nice to see horizontal headlights for once instead of the you know vertical ones we've seen since the 458s came out 
And I think it looks really, really sharp. I know some people aren't that crazy about it. I think it's one of the best looking Ferraris. Not that Ferrari makes bad looking cars, but this really takes it up to another level. And I, I love the way that thing looks. Anyway, so as far as the technical specs, they bumped up a little bit over the standard 48. So the J50 has 681 horsepower from the same twin turbo V8 engine that the 48 has. And um, so they're only making 10 of these cars and they're going to all be customized, you know, for the individual owners. Um, and, uh, you know, should be very, very rare and like I said I'm not sure if they're only going to be available to people in Japan or if they'll be available worldwide but I'm sure all 10 are already sold out and uh, you know you can't buy it anyway but uh, very cool to see that and hopefully it you know bodes well for future Ferrari designs. Next is that Mercedes this past week unveiled the 2018 Mercedes E-Class Coupe. Now just last week we saw spy shots of this car and I wasn't expecting it to be officially unveiled this soon um, but they unveiled it online here ahead of the Detroit release that will be happening next month early next month and I gotta say from the spy shots I was kind of like yeah it's probably not gonna look that great seeing it now uh, you know the official pictures it looks very stunning they did an excellent job on it I, I particularly love the way that you know it still has the pillarless design there for you know there is no B pillar so that it's totally wide open there and I love that that's an old-fashioned kind of a styling trait there for coupes and I love I think that adds so much and the S coupe has that as well which I think is great and so very exciting to see that they were able to integrate that because it really you know, ha makes it have a really beautiful sloping roof line, and um, I just love the way that that looks. And um, you know, of course, uh, this is based on the new E, new e class because the old E class. Uh, was definitely aged. So this new one, um, the length is 4.8 inches longer, and the wheelbase is 4.4 inches longer. And um, yeah, all kinds of high-tech stuff. It basically has the same interior as the E-Class, although there's new air vents that they say were inspired by jet turbines and look really, really stunning, I gotta say. And all those little trim pieces in these Mercedes is really what sets them apart, I think, as some of the best interiors in the world. And um, so yeah, I mean, it's just, you know, it has the same 12.3 inch infotainment display along with a 12.3 inch instrument display with all the digital stuff. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is standard now, which is also very nice to see instead of forcing people to pay extra money for that. Um, um, and uh, a really cool little uh, innovation that's new on this is it has magic vision control, which gets rid of the wiper washer sprayers that you usually have, um, and it actually incorporates the windshield washer sprayers within the uh, wipers themselves. So hopefully that part's removable so that you don't have to spend like $500 every time you want to get new windshield wipers for your E-Class Coupe, but still a very cool idea, and so i will see how that works in execution. Um, but as far as the models available, there's going to be just two trim levels, a rear-wheel drive E400 and then an all-wheel drive E400 uh, formatic. And so they're both going to be powered by the same twin turbocharged 3 liter V6 with a 9 speed automatic transmission. And the V6 does 329 horsepower and 354 pound feet of torque, which is the same as the previous model, but they're saying that this time the peak torque comes on um, earlier and uh, it ends a little bit higher in the rev range. So um, that should, you know, make it drive a little bit better, I suppose. And um, yeah, so these are going to be arriving in dealers summer of 2017. And um, there's no official word about any other models but we have already seen spy shots of a convertible version which we knew was coming anyway so expect a convertible sometime hopefully next summer or fall and then in addition to that you know we know there's probably going to be at least one amg variant um you know there's a good chance of seeing all the same trim levels you see for the e sedan so you know i would expect an e43 coupe and also an e63 coupe and so hotter versions of that I'm sure are on the way but uh, the standard one looks striking already and so that's great to see another very striking car that uh, was just actually the pricing was announced this past week was the Aframeo Giulia so you know they're, those are they're finally starting to become on sale this month and uh, it's it's starting off with the Quadrifoglio models this month and then next month is for the standard Giulias but they're actually arriving stateside there's people that have been spotting them in the ports in Baltimore and stuff so Alpha is finally bringing the Giulia after so many delays and and, you know, wondering when it was actually coming. Anyway, the standard Julia starts at $38,990. And as you'll see with all the pricings for the Julias here, it's a little higher than the competition. But it is a very striking design, arguably one of the best designs in its segment, if not the best. Uh, and so, but yes, um, $38,990 with Destination. 
I mean, so a 3 Series is 34000 or so, but uh, Mercedes C300, though, is around 40000 So I'd say it's right in the middle of the mix there. Um, and the, the the best thing about the base, Julie, is that it actually has better performance than most of the competition's base models do. It has the 2-liter turbocharged inline 4. It does 280 horsepower and 306 pound-feet of torque. 5.1 seconds 0 to 60 for that base, Julia. Which, so, I mean, that'll toast most of these other, uh, you know, I guess, luxury s- small sports sedans. So... Um, I think that, you know, even though it is a little bit more than like a three series, it's faster. And so for some, I think that may, you know, sway them hopefully. Um, and so in addition, now the quadrifolio model is the one that's more expensive. We are hearing it's going to be around 70000 The final actual starting price here is $73,595 with destination, which again, more than an M3, more than an ATS-V. Um, and so it's right around the same price as like a C63S uh, Mercedes. And but then again, you have like 505 horsepower here with the Quadrifolio version. ATSV has like 464. The M3 has 440. So they're way down on power. Now you know this has. They all use the same eight-speed automatic, which should be quick shifting. So it should be you know faster in a straight line, hopefully, than all the competition. Um, and uh, so yeah, the only unfortunate thing about the Quadrifolio is although the rest of the world is able to get a manual version. Here in the States, they're only offering it with the automatic. Even though they promised us the manual originally, they've revoked uh, that promise, and now it's automatic only. Hopefully, they'll see the light, and maybe once they get their footing here in America, then they'll uh, drop the manual version and bring it over here for us. But in the meantime, it's automatic only, which is one thing is a disadvantage over the M3 and the ATSV. If you want manuals, you can get them manual on those. You can't now on the Julia, which is a real shame. But it is uh, should be certainly very impressive. 3.8 seconds, 0 to 60, and uh, the Nurburgring lap time is a record setter. So, I mean, very impressive. Lucid Motors, which is a new Tesla rival that's going to be building cars in Arizona, they officially unveiled their new uh, electric vehicle here that's uh, going to be called the Air. And so it's going to be over $100,000 and compete directly with the Tesla Model S, although it's going to have better range than a Model S by a good bit. So it's going to have a 130 kilowatt hour battery, which is, a uh, you know, the the top of the line Tesla has the 100 kilowatt hour battery, the P100D. So this is 130. So it's one up to the Tesla there. And thanks to that, uh, it means that it has a longer range. This has a range of 400 miles per charge versus I think like 300 or so is the top for the Tesla there, 330 maybe. So this outdoes it there. And it also has more power because this Lucid Air um, is going to have um, different electric motors. Um, one does 600 horsepower and the other one uh, does does the same but combined they make a thousand horsepower for some reason i don't know why it's less but a thousand horsepower for this thing i mean it looks like a super nice slick luxury sedan but it has a thousand horsepower it'll keep up with a veyron probably it's just kind of crazy what they're doing with electric cars these days and um so yeah, they said that it's, uh, you know, the way they packaged it is very clever and intelligent. And it's supposedly has a zero to 60 time of two and a half seconds. So it'll embarrass uh, everything basically, and maybe even have a slight edge over the fastest Tesla. And um, so yes, they say that although it's going to cost over $100,000, there will be an affordable $65,000 model that'll be, that'll be produced in the future at some point down the road. Um, and uh, so yeah, it, you know, has all the other same stuff. It's, you know, got all it's basically autonomous ready with all kinds of sensors and stuff so that it can be uh, able to be driven, uh, you know, autonomously and stuff. And so very cool to see that. Speaking about electric cars, though, uh, another uh, news story this week, there's a report saying that uh, Volkswagen, you know, how they've been toying with microbus concepts for years. And so they're saying, though, the new, the Bud E that they uh, debuted this past January at the Consumer Electronics Show, um, they're saying that that actually may have a chance of being produced. And it's going to be on the same kind of stretch version of the MEB platform that the ID hatchback that they're planning on building by 2019 will be based on. So we're hoping that this will, you know, be coming along maybe 2020 or so, you know, soon after that for this electric, all electric little micro bus. And we don't really have any other details. It's kind of just speculation at this point, but that's kind of what some people are hearing. So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. Another very futuristic thing uh, that BMW is going to be showing at the new consumer electronics show for 2017 here in a couple of weeks in January. Um, it's They're showing off this new concept interior that it has holographic screens. It's called Holo Active Touch. And it's um, basically using the same kind of fundamentals as a heads-up display where it's just a reflection so that it appears that it's hovering. 
but you can interact with it. There's sensors and cameras in the interior of the car that monitor your hand movements and will actually, so you can touch something in midair and it'll ding at you to say, oh, okay, you've touched that. So that you know you're actually doing something whenever you're waving your hands around and stuff. And um, so it's just kind of you know, trying to push things forward into the future and getting rid of a physical touch screen and using these motion uh, movements instead, which uh, is cool in theory, but you know, some everyone still just wants a normal volume knob, a normal tune knob, and having physical buttons and stuff. You don't, you don't have the luxury of being able to look down and play with things um, whenever you're driving. And I know that all this stuff is assuming that autonomous cars are only a few years away. And I feel like they probably wouldn't put something like this into a production car, at least not, um, you know, th to this extent until they had fully autonomous cars, because then you can sit there and stare at the holograms all you want because you're not driving. But until then, I think it's a very distracting thing. Um, trying to figure out where in midair you need to push in order to do certain things, I think would just be a terrible, terrible idea. Um, but we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. But a uh, cool concept nonetheless. Another thing, uh, some not so great news here from Fiat Chrysler this past week. There's a report saying that the Grand Wagoneer and the next generation heavy duty Ram uh, commercial trucks are delayed. Now the Ram 1500, you know, pickup truck is still on, uh, I guess on schedule. It was pushed back earlier this year as well um, to 2019, but that's still on track for 2019. But they say that the Grand Wagoneer, which is the 100,000 plus um, Jeep competitor to a Range Rover and things like that, um, they said that they'd have to retool so much for that and for these uh, new larger Ram vehicles that um, it just would cost too much. So they're pushing it back a little bit instead because uh, they have to pay down some debt and things like that. So um, we're not sure exactly when they're going to be coming out here, uh, but they're saying it could be, you know, 2020 or so before we see any of that kind of stuff. Um, and like I said, you know, there's been other delays with Fiat Chrysler and they got to kind of focus on their bread and butter and, you know, sell the um, Wranglers and things like that. And hopefully that'll help them to get everything else on track and add these new models. So cool to see that. Speaking of new models, BMW was spied this past week testing the X2 crossover, which is an X1. That's a little bit of a more rakish uh, rear roof line there. And um, I mean, it does seem to have some other changes to it as well to make it look a little more distinctive. Um, but it's essentially, you know, taking the uh, same concept as the X4 and the X6. And um, yeah, so we just have some shots of it running around in the snow here. And um, it should be debuting here next year sometime. So, you know, look to see that uh, relatively soon. And so cool to see that out spied. Another thing is now Rolls Royce just last week dropped some new spy shots of the Cullinan, uh, Project Cullinan, which is their SUV that, you know, Rolls Royce is working on here. And now we only saw in those previous two spy shots just two front end shots. Now we get to see what the back end looks like, although the taillights aren't finished or anything like that. And the roof line is still a little tricky to make out. But as you can see, it's going to have the suicide doors there, much like all the other Rolls Royces. That's a signature thing, so that was to be expected. And, you know, it's actually, it looks a little smaller than I think most were expecting. It, it's very manageable, not overly long. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's the only thing that's really surprising about that to me, seeing the side and the back is just how short it actually is. So we'll have to wait and see if there's different wheelbase versions and whatnot. But um, interesting to see that outspied. Another thing that was uh, just uh, announced this past week is Aston Martin. Um, they're going to be doing some new DB4 GTs, which was a car built from 1959 to 1963, uh, a really famous car in the racing world, and uh, just is legendary. And we see how you know Jaguar has just done the uh, XKSSs that they've been you know redoing and things like that. And so I think that, uh, you know, those are going for like two million bucks each. And so I think Aston Martin says, wow, well, we could actually do these if people are willing to pay this much money for these classics. And so this is actually even a little bit more of a further step than the Jags were because they're doing 25 of these DB4 GTs. Um, and uh, they're actually making some nice little improvements to make it a little more modern as well, uh, but only in the right areas. So what they're basically doing, uh, they're going to be building it in the original factory where they built these cars. And apparently this factory hasn't been used Used since the Vanquish S back in 2007. So that's great, you know, going to bring some new jobs back for that. And in addition, they're going to pick up with the VIN numbers right where the 63s left off. And so the engine is going to be uh, the same kind of engine they had before, which was a six cylinder, um, a straight six that did 331 horsepower and had three twin choke Weber carburetors. And um, 
They said they've built it from scratch, though, and they've actually used the supplier for the DB11 to make these motors, um, for the castings at least. And it's going to also have an FIA spec roll cage, a fire extinguisher, and seat belts that are added, which are new things that the old ones did not have. And it'll weigh 2,706 pounds, which uh, should be very, very fun. And uh, so anyway, they're going to be $1.9 million each, and they're going to be available in the summer of 2017. Um, you know, I'm sure they're probably already all sold out anyway, but very awesome to see that. And then the last story this week is a report here um, that GM is expected to unveil two new crossovers of the Detroit Auto Show next month. Um, and so the first one that they're going to be unveiling is the GMC uh, Terrain, which is, you know, much overdue for a refresh here. And then also the Chevrolet Traverse, the new version of that. And um, so we just saw the Equinox, you know, not too long ago. And so the terrain will be based on that. Um, but then the Traverse is a little bit larger, and that will also share a platform with the new Buick Enclave, which will be coming out at some point too. So very exciting to see those there in a couple of weeks. But yeah, so that's it for all the news this week, guys. So I'll send it back to me in the car. Alrighty, so I'll leave you guys with a nice little acceleration here, like I always do. Here we go. <laughs> you know what I've noticed? These snow tires, I think, actually have better grip than the uh, all-season tires do that I had on this car. This car came with, which shows how truly terrible the uh, stock tires are here for the 18s. Um, and I plan to possibly replace those in the spring. But anyway, that's it as far as all the updates and everything. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the update. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next week. Take care.